Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. If you're anything like me, you love stretching your stamps and getting as much use out of them as possible. I'm sure you've probably used an everyday set for holidays before. Maybe you took a teddy bear stamp and added a Santa hat or something like that. But have you ever used one holiday set for a different holiday? Today I'm going to show you how I turned a few stamps from Brutus Monroe's All Hallows Eve set into a Valentine and a Galentine. That's right, don't forget your gal pals this year. I started by stamping my devil and my vampire with Memento Tuxedo Black Ink. I'm only showing you once here on screen, but I actually stamped it two or three times to get a nice dark black image. And then I, I'm going to color with Copic markers. That's why I used the Memento. It, it's Copic friendly. If you don't want to watch me color, go ahead and skip ahead about a minute and a half. I'm not doing anything special. Um, I'm just using two to three shades for each area. I use the darkest colors and the more recessed areas where the shading would be the deepest and highlights on top. Um, I really, I was thinking about these stamps and this little Valentine super, or I'm sorry, this uh, vampire, she's very cute. I thought she would be useful not just for Valentine's Day, but also you could, you know, use other sentiments, maybe um, getting older sucks or being sick sucks, something like that. I think I'm going to get a lot of use out of this stamp. Um, because I'm doing Valentine here, I decided to color her mostly with pinks and reds. Uh, I thought it would be, you know, theme appropriate. <laughs> and you can see I'm missing some pinks in between my uh, medium shade and my lightest shade of pink. But I can just use the tip to tip technique to fill in the gap there. And then I gave her a red cape and a red headband. And then for my devil, I thought about coloring him pink, but I want to give this card to my son. So he's uh, probably a little more traditional and I went with red instead. And once I get my little figures all colored in, I'm going to go ahead and cut them out with my scan and cut. I left a white border around the edge. It's easiest, especially with his pitchfork. Um, so it didn't cut that off at all. And it's cute. Then I went ahead and uh, cut a bunch of dies, um, all the heart dies in my stash. I went through and cut out some different cardstock there. And then I also cut some backgrounds out uh, from this little heart background. I took a piece of graph paper and I made a template first and then I ran it through my big shot a few times. I've also got a couple different card bases. Wasn't sure what exactly I was going to use. But I decided for my Galantine to use the scallop border and I'm just taking a couple shades of Distress Oxide ink to lay down some pink in the background. And then I'm also going to go around the edges of my paper hearts. I wanted to get the uh, colors all coordinating and popping off each other a little bit more. And I decided I needed just a little more pink in the background here. It, it was getting swallowed up by the hearts on top. Once I've got her done, I'll work on my devil. And I'm just going to add a little shading to the doily. And this red heart wasn't quite bright enough. So I added a little more red. And then to make the edges pop a little more, I came in with a little bit of aged mahogany. And I think that really did the trick. I've went ahead and spelled out Love Bites with an alphabet stamp set. And I'm just going to stamp that here on my card front. And inside the card I want it to say Happy Galentine's Day. I thought that would be cute. And you'll see I need to move my magnets because it's in the way of the door closing. <laughs> So I'm stamping that out in Festive Berries. Turned out nice. For the inside of my Valentine's card, I went and switched the G to a V, so now it says Happy Valentine's Day. And I didn't want to move all those individual little stamps, so um, I had to fold my card basically inside out. It, it looks like I'm stamping on the top of my card base, but I'm actually stamping on the inside. And you'll see in a second what I meant. Um, I went ahead and stamped it first in Festive Berries, and then to get um, two tones there, I came back with a little more of that mahogany. And then I decided to really make this one pop. I wanted to emboss it, 
So I cleaned my stamp off, added some Versamark ink, and then I can put clear embossing powder on it. Now with Distress Oxide inks, if you work quickly, you can emboss with them, but I was doing two tones, so the top half had pretty much dried by the time I added the bottom half there. That's why I'm using the Versamark. And you can see what I mean about stamping the inside of my card base there. Now I'm going to take this little fishtail banner and make sure that I've got my stamps lined up. It says Handsome and Devil, or in this case, Devil and Handsome. <laughs> um, and I'm going to basically stamp the same way. First with Festive Berries, and then again with a little bit of that Aged Mahogany on the bottom. And that gives me that two-tone look again. And I also wanted to emboss these as well. This time around I used my anti-static powder tool, that helps. Then I've got some Versamark ink, and again clear embossing powder. And then I can heat set this. That anti-static pow powder tool really helps anything that you don't want to stick, not stick. <laughs> so now I've got those all embossed, and I will take that fishtail die and I'm going to cut out my banners here. And I'm actually going to trim these down, so I'm not worried about getting both ends. I'll take that heart background, make sure my card base is facing the right direction. I don't know if you've ever accidentally glued the card front onto the back of your card base, but it sucks. <laughs> so now I'm pretty careful to check before I glue things down. And the little hearts that I cut out, they actually have a, a faux stitching, stitching um, down the center of them. So I thought it would be fun to glue them back in place, but just along the stitch line. And then I can pop up the edges a little bit. That way you can see a little bit of the gray background popping through. But it's just an accent. It's not a, a focal point. And I found that it was easiest to use my bone folder um, just to go ahead and press down the center of it and my fingernails to, to pop it up, just like that. Once I've got them all in place, I'm going to put my embellishments on. And I went ahead and I'm trimming down these little fishtail banners, and I'm going to glue them to this big red heart. I like the way this turned out. Originally I was thinking that the, uh, the banners would stick out of the heart on the the left side and the heart would be down in the bottom right corner, but it, it was a little too big so I ended up moving it around and I put the, the little banners down at the bottom. It reminds me of like a an award ribbon. I'm just going to pop it all in place with foam tape and I, I really, I use a lot of foam tape. <laughs> I should probably take out stock in 3M, but uh, it gives you a lot of good dimension, and I think that's one of the things that makes handmade cards extra special. I don't always add a ton of dimension, but but it is one of those easy ways to to really make a card feel special. I'm going to pop my devil. Actually, I don't stick them down yet. I, I'm just uh, adding the, the foam tape there because I want to add a little more color to them first. But I'm using them as a placeholder for... All of the other hearts, I'll get those in place, and you can see I use a combination of one or two layers of foam tape and um, PVA glue. Some parts are glued flat, and then some areas there's, you know, space behind it, so I want to go ahead and back that with foam tape. So for my devil, I decided he had too much white space behind him, so I'm coming in with three shades of gray. I started with the darkest in the, the back center there, where it would be the furthest away from him. And then I gradually switched to lighter and lighter colors, and I've got the lightest color going around all of the outside edges there. I thought it looked better. Just uh, made him fit in a little bit more. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop him down onto my card. And the very last thing I'll do for this card to finish it off is add some clear flat-backed sequins. There's a couple different sizes here, and actually I, I really like it when you have multiple sizes of the sequins. 
Now for my Galantine, I'm gonna do basically the same thing. I'm building up my embellishment. I'm using a lot of different layers of foam tape here. And I won't make you watch all of it. But I'll go ahead and stick the different pieces down. And there's a part where she's overlapping, so she needs one area with two pieces of foam tape and the rest with just a single area or a single layer. I'm going to glue down my little glitter hearts. Before I stick this in place, actually I think I'll probably add my foam tape here. Yeah, I'll add my foam tape first. But I'm not going to stick it down just yet because I want to get my background adhered to the card front. I've got a really thin layer of fun foam. This is just in a pack from the dollar store. It's about half the thickness of regular foam tape. And since I already have so much other dimension going on, I thought just a nice thin layer would be good here. So I'll back my little scallop border and then I'll go ahead and stick this to my card front and off camera I put a big heavy block on this and let it dry. I just didn't want the edges to pull up at all. After it's dry I can go ahead and stick my heart in place and then I'll add a few more sequins. And these are not the uh, flat-backed ones. They have the little holes in them, and they're all the same size, which for some reason when they're all the same size, I struggle a lot more <laughs> with placement. It's harder for me to figure out where I want them. So once I figure out where I want them, I'm gonna go ahead and glue them in place. I'll add just a little bit of shimmer pin, and then I'm gonna come in with some Judikins Diamond Glaze, and I'll go over the skull and the brooch, and I'll also pop some onto the sequins. That just covers the holes and makes sure they're not going to come off. And then she's done. So what do you think of my Halloween for Valentine's Day idea? Yay, nay? How do you stretch your stamps? Have you ever used one holiday set for another? Let me know down in the comments below. You can find links to all the products that I've used on my blog. And you guys, guess what? You can also find me on the Brutus Monroe blog too. I'm guest designing in February. Yay! If you liked today's video, be sure to subscribe and click the bell. Thanks for watching!